So uh, there was a poll, and I don't have it in front of me, but there was a poll that that showed that a majority of astronomers are theists. I think it was in the 60s somewhere. But it also showed that like a minority of biologists um, were theists. So it was almost like a 60-40 opposite split or something like that. And when I was uh, running an apologetics page, I did an informal poll asking when the people on that page thought the split between science and faith occurred and i gave them the choice of galileo and the church uh over astronomy or darwin and the church over biology and 70 percent of these people and they weren't lay people they, these people were people who ran christian institutions and man pulpits 70 percent blamed darwin and i thought to myself wow that that that's an interesting thing so uh, my question to you is this um uh, what, what, why do you think that looking at a telescope um, over looking at a microscope would give somebody a greater opportunity to appreciate that God is the agent of creation? And uh, is, it, is there something there or is it simply that we are um, victims of our past and the, the, scopes, the, the, the ghosts of the Scopes Monkey Trial? Um, in other words... Why is an astronomer more likely to believe in God than a biologist? I don't know because I'm not a biologist, but mm. I can I can speculate that uh, for people in general, what I what I sense now as I talk to anyone, whether it's a person, a, a congregation of religious faith, or whether it's people who don't have any particular religious faith, but everyone can look. At, at the universe and look at these images we're getting from telescopes from space and have this sense of of awe and wonder and humility um, sometimes people even feel insignificant um, but i also feel like there's a sense of significance that we can take that we can even recognize the universe and understand that we're a part of this majestic uh, place when you get to the point of biology, which for astronomers is just this tiny little piece of time at the end of, of, of uh, so far of, of the, of the 13.8 billion year development of history of the universe, um, uh, you get to the point of how did life come along? I think um, for astronomers, it's, it's kind of, it seems kind of, in a sense, I won't, uh, I'll use the word seamless, but we can see the development over billions of years of generations of stars creating heavier elements, which eventually enables the formation of solid bodies like planets around stars. And then those solid bodies themselves have the, the, uh, the complex material that's required for life. We don't yet know exactly how life starts. Um, but we can kind of see the pathway and then for us the biologists take over at that point um for this might what might be seen a small fraction of the history of the universe when life has been uh present on planet earth life itself has been present for most of the history of planet earth in simple form but advanced life hasn't been a present only for a small fraction of the history of life on earth so i kind of see that more in a continuum I could imagine, though, that we, many people, both people of faith and not, have been kind of pre-programmed with this idea that humans are somehow, must somehow be biologically different from other life on Earth. And biology is telling us that it is not. In fact, that humans um, have evolved, which simply means that things are changing over time. Um, and other life forms have too on planet earth and to me it's all very marvelous because we are all life forms on earth have this ability plasticity in a, in, in a way to adapt to environments and niches in the environment and changes in the environment which means that all life forms on earth right now have been adapting over time to to thrive in the particular environmental niches that we have now and certain types of life on planet Earth have grown more social and more intelligent. And that includes advanced primates, but it also includes um, 
dolphins and elephants. And uh, we need as Christians to recognize that uh, there are other types of sentient and sensitive and social uh, creatures and communities on this planet within the animal world, not just humans. And yet humans uh, have, have been endowed, we believe as Christians, with a special responsibility. We, we, what we do has great impact, not only on other humans, but on the other life forms on planet Earth. Whether we like it or not, we, are, we have dominion over planet Earth. That is a truth of scripture that's undeniable when we see the impact humans have for good and, and ill on the planet and other creatures. Now, that does sometimes seem to, to give people in science and outside the sense that, gee, there must not be, maybe that maybe the whole idea of a God is not real because what, you know, what I always heard was that humans were created differently and are somehow uh, um, different from other creatures, but biologically we're seeing that humans share the same types of physiology and maybe even the same types of social and mental structures as some other animals. So does that mean that the whole God thing is just a, a story, a fable? And so many people may come to that kind of conclusion. I don't think that's warranted. I think we understand even by closer looks at, at scripture that humans, uh, scripture sometimes unflatteringly tells us that we are dust which is really true. You know, we now know that the, the cells in our bodies are actually made from, uh, from stardust, from materials created in other stars. I think that's marvelous, but we are just like other creatures on the planet. Our bodies are made of elements that were forged in stars and our bodies are similar in physiological function to that of other creatures. We're not different in that sense. And we're not even different in the terms of, of the fact that humans do. We now know have feelings and emotions and have love and aggression and even perhaps compassion and complex social structures. And humans have not always been very sensitive to that in, in the lives of other animals. But we do very clearly have a dominion of impact on the other creatures of this planet. Nothing could be truer from scripture and we can see it from our our own um, impacts on planet Earth and the fact that we feel responsible and the fact that we're having a conversation like we're having today is something we really don't see other creatures on Earth doing. We don't know what goes on in their inner spirits, but we do sense a kind of not only advanced intelligence in humans, but the advanced abilities to contemplate ourselves, our communal history, our communal future, and even to make uh, plans and actions that are uh, distinctly evil toward others or distinctly good, um, those things seem to be somewhat unique to humans. So um, I don't know why biologists might uh, poll as being less, less amenable to belief in God than astronomers, but I think it's probably because all of us biologists and not have been sort of pre-programmed from an early age to think that humans must be somehow biologically different from other species. And when we find out that we're not, um, maybe that makes it easier for, for a biologist to kind of uh, drop the idea of this of God, whereas astronomers can see more, more seamlessly the progression of the universe into the point of life as we are living it now. That's my hypothesis. Thank There's you. also a historical aspect to this, I should add, which is that in more recent parts of human Western history over the last century or so, um, often when certain pockets of Christians, especially in the U.S., have taken on science as though it were an enemy, um, they have posited evolution as being anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-theist. And that doesn't have to be the way that it's seen. But because of that, I think many in the bio biological community have seen to, to kind of have to become defensive toward this uh, manifestation of, of Christian expression um, in the last century or so. And so that defensiveness may have caused some biologists to feel like they cannot be people of faith if the people of faith that they see seem to reject what we understand from biology and biological evolution as being true. 
And so I think that's an unfortunate and un unnecessary sense of antithesis, but that may be some of the reason that biologists may feel more threatened by uh, some of the attacks that they have experienced from people of faith than astronomers have ever experienced. <laughs>